What's up YouTube? It's Austin. Uh, I haven't made a uh, transition update video for you guys in a while, so I thought I would do it. Uh, because yesterday was my birthday. I turned 28 years old, which is pretty great. Um, and yesterday was also my one year and five months on T and my six months post-op. So, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd tell you guys what's going on with the transition. First thing I want to say is how excited I am that my acne's finally clearing up. Uh, I've still got, like, a couple of spots, like, here and here right now this week, but, like, it was really bad there for quite a while, uh, and it's finally cleared up, and that could just be, like, I'm growing out of it, uh, which is great. I know it's supposed to really settle down after that sort of one-year mark, so it could be that I'm just growing out of it, but I think it's also that I finally found the combination of things to put on my face that seems to be working, so I thought I'd show you what they are. Obviously not sponsored, but, like, I thought you might want to know. The first one is, I've talked before about acne and uh, the two sort of acne cleanser things, salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide, and how they're like the two over-the-counter things that do different things to your acne. So anyways, um, I found this guy, which is the Clean and Clear Continuous Control Acne Cleanser, which is 10% benzoyl peroxide. Um, and I just use this in the shower once a day, uh, and that's really helps. And then the other thing is this moisturizer I found, which is super great. It's called the... The Shea Moisture African Black Soap Problem Skin Moisturizer. Uh, it looks like that, and I got it at Target. Um, I got both of these at Target. Uh, but anyways, so that combination of washing once a day with the benzoyl peroxide and then using this moisturizer has been great. Like, I was not sure, again, if it was like I'm just growing out of it or if this really helps, but I'm pretty sure this stuff really helps. So, um, yeah, better skin is great. I feel much better in terms of like, I mean sort of like relationally when I'm talking to people I'm not as worried about my skin but also it just feels better to not have like giant cysts on your face so you know transition update skin um the other transition related thing um is just sort of like muscle growth and I will take my shirt off because I gotta show you my scars anyways um but like I'm really finally getting some of the muscle that I I don't know if you can see anything on my back yet but um, my muscle growth is finally kind of coming in, which is awesome, uh, and, um, that's, like, entirely due to CrossFit. I've gotten really intense about going to classes. I go, like, five days a week now because I'm training for a weightlifting meet coming up in two months. Actually, it's, like, a month and a half. Um, and I'm really excited because it's my first weightlifting meet since I was an Olympic weightlifter in high school, and this time I get to compete on the guys' team. So, um, that feels really great, and I'm really excited. Um, yeah, so muscle growth is going well, um, and also, like, I suppose I can show you sort of down here, but, like, hair growth is, like, getting crazy, um, as per usual. Um, so I'm getting a lot more hair, and, like, I have fuzzy, fuzzy hair here. You probably can't see, it's too light. But, um, I have hair on my chest now, which is, like, weird and cool. Um, so, yeah, hair and muscle growth are the sort of main things that I'm noticing now. Um, and, like, facial hair, I now have to shave pretty often. Like, I, like, I just shaved yesterday and I can feel bristly, I'm bristly already. Um, so shaving more often is a weird thing to get used to, but kind of fun. Um, so yeah, that's about all in terms of, like, testosterone updates. Um, I've just gone up to 0.35 milliliters every week, so that's 70 milligrams, 70 milligrams a week. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the tea update. Um, in terms of the uh, top surgery update, obviously you can see my scars, this is what they look like. I'm really happy with the sort of placement um, of the scars and of my nipples too, they're nice. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm feeling really good post-top surgery. I went in for a uh, check-in with my doctor who's like, she's my general practitioner, my GP, but she's also uh, like, she knows a lot about trans stuff, she has a lot of trans patients, um, and so I, um, and I'm really lucky to be able to see her, she, like, she's amazing, but it, you have to book her, like, a month in advance just to go in and, like, see her at all, so, because she has so many people that want to see her, which is great. Um, anyways, I went in to see her a couple of days ago, on, like, Monday, I think it was, or Tuesday, to do a med check-in for my testosterone, and I was like, oh yeah, so I haven't seen her since my top surgery, and I was like, here are my scars, and she said, you look like you've got some keloid scarring going on, because you can see, like, right here, where the scar is wider, and then right here, it's kind of raised, and then same thing 
over here, it's wider and it's raised right underneath here. Um, and she says, that looks like keloid scarring. And I was like, okay, I thought like people uh, who whose bodies are, um, are like, they, they get keloid scarring. I thought that was like on every scar. It's not just like on certain scars. And she was like, no, it can just be something that happens with like larger operations and bigger scars. Um, so she uh, suggested that I find out if my insurance covers getting um, steroid injections into the scars to help them heal better. So I might do that. I have to check on whether my insurance will cover it or not. Um, it's like a dermatological thing, so um, a lot of insurance apparently does cover it, which is great. Um, so we'll see about that. I honestly don't feel that bad about them. Like, I know that they're, I know, like, right here and right here, they're obviously stretched because I do a lot of, like, overhead lifting. Um, but, like, I'm not that bothered about it, to be honest. Um, and they'll kind of, they'll fade over time. This is kind of, I think, what it's supposed to look most like right here. You can see how it's, like, really faded. That's how everything should look. So I don't know why that one spot in particular is better than the rest of it. Um, but yeah, I feel good about it. I feel good about, um, the way things are looking. And, yeah, so that's my top surgery update. Um, the one other thing is that I got a question on a uh, on a video a while ago uh, from Oliver Noble and he says getting my surgery this summer and I have two questions does it hurt when they take the drains out is number one um, and the answer to that question is it uh, yeah kind of um, it was something that I was worried about too um, when they take the drain so you have drains in after surgery to help um, any like fluid that builds up in your chest come out and you have to have the drains in for like five days to a week uh, and then they take the drains out, um, and I was worried it was going to hurt too. It mostly just felt like a weird burning sensation. It wasn't like, uh, I don't, yeah, it wasn't like a, a ripping or anything. It wasn't like, <laughs> so don't get freaked out. It was just like a sudden weird burning under my skin. Um, and it was kind of like, ooh, ow, for like a second, but then it was over. Um, it was... I don't know. I feel like it, if you've had your ears pierced, it's kind of that same thing where it's like a second of like, ow, what the heck? And then it's over. Um, so yeah, that's how I remember it. So don't be too scared about it. Um, it, it hurts a little bit, but like not enough to get freaked out about. Um, the other thing he asked was, I heard that the surgical vest that you wear for that first week is so tight that you feel like you can't breathe. And as someone with anxiety, that would freak me out. Totally legit. I also have anxiety, so I understand it. Um, I, we, uh, do have to wear compression vests for that, um, a surgical compression vest for that week after surgery, and it's like, you wear the vest, like, they pad you up with all kinds of stuff, and then you wear the vest over that, and it is tight, and it is uncomfortable, and it sucks to sleep in, um, but it doesn't, it didn't make me feel like I couldn't breathe, like, they, um, they did a good job of, like, compressing it, um, enough to make you feel like everything is, like, really held tight, so, like, you don't have to feel weird or worried about it not being tight enough, which was actually, I was more worried about it not being tight enough. Um, it didn't make me feel like I couldn't breathe, is the short answer. I could still breathe, but you do get sort of used to breathing into your stomach, because the surgical vest you wear only goes to about here. Um, so like, you still have this whole area of your stomach that you can breathe into, so don't get freaked out. Um, that's, it's totally going to be fine. You can still breathe. Uh, even if you, I mean, if you're used to wearing a binder regularly, like, if you ever go running in a binder, which you shouldn't do, it's that same feeling where you're just like, I wish I could expand my lungs some more, but, like, it is what it is. So, um, so yeah, don't get freaked. It's okay. Uh, I hope that helps answer your questions. Um, if you guys have more questions about uh, transition-related stuff, feel free to ask me in the comments, uh, and I will pretty much answer as long as it's, like, not super rude. Please don't be super rude to people. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's about what's going on with my transition. Um, the only thing, yeah, so the only thing that might be coming up is maybe getting those steroid injections, and I'll let you guys know if I do that and how it goes. Uh, other than that, that's about all. So I hope you guys are doing well, and uh, yeah, have a happy April 8th, and we will see you back next Wednesday for the next Transgender and Christian video. You got a bonus update this week, so... Uh, Alright guys, we'll see you next week. Bye!